Good morning, everybody. Today, we're having a look at Psalm 41. Psalm 41 is actually a really interesting psalm. It has three basic parts to it, which we'll sort of look at piece by piece. Uh, the first three verses, uh, it says is the Psalm of David. And the first three verses is where David says, blessed are those who consider the poor. Um, and what that basically means is that uh, it functions as a beatitude, just like in, in Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, blessed, blessed are those who are pure in heart. It functions the same way that, um, and, and David is expressing his confidence uh, in God, knowing that God has set up a deliberate way of living. That when we consider others, when we show kindness and extend grace and forgiveness, especially to those populations that are vulnerable, uh, this is something that fills God's heart with joy. This is what we are called to do. And so David begins this psalm by saying, Blessed are those who consider the poor. And then he goes on to list that God watches over these sorts of people. God is with these people. This is how God has designed us to live. And this is how we are supposed to respond to those around us. So the first three verses are a beatitude, a blessing, a, a statement of confidence that um, knowing that this is how God likes to operate. But then the mood changes. In verses 4 to 9, David then expresses the reality that he finds himself living in. So he moves from this statement of saying, God, this is how I, I believe and know that you act historically, to sort of lamenting about his current situation. In verse 4, he mentions that he's sinned against God, and then he goes on to say that um, for whatever reason, maybe it's because of his own sin or just what is happening in life, that there are others who have turned against him, who are speaking lies to him, who mock him, who are plotting vengeance on him, and he finds himself distressed. And in verse 9, there's this cry that even his, his dearest friend has turned away from him, has hurt him in some way. And so, we have this strange contrast where David says, God, I know this is how you work, that you are someone that lifts up those who are kind, who consider the poor, and uh, that this is how you historically operate. But here's what my situation is now. I, I, I've messed up, and people are taking advantage of my situation. I, I find myself sick, and people are trying to get me, and my own friend has abandoned me. So there's this weird contrast of knowing God's promises, but also living in the reality that the, your current situation does not seem to be living up to the promises that you have clung to in the past, that you know to be true. And so how do we resolve that disparity between what God's word says, that God is with those who choose him and follow him and live according to his ways, but then living in the reality that that's not actually happening at the current moment. Well, this is how the psalm resolves. It says, yet, God, I will put my trust in you. Yet, in the middle of my current situation, even though I know certain realities to be true about living according to your word, and my situation does not seem to be matching up to those realities, I will still put my hope and my trust in you. And it ends with this, this line that declares praise and blessing to the God who is there, the God who is powerful, the God who is with us. Uh, and this sort of functions as uh, the close to this section of Psalms. And we'll see this repeated after end, at the end of each of these books, is what they're called, that despite what has been said prior, whether it's uh, praise, whether it's distress, whether it's sadness, whether it's joy, whether it's trust, whether it's anything in between there, the final word is praise be to God. He, he's the one that deserves all of our praise and adoration 
because no matter what our current situation is or what has happened in the past, we know that God is still good and we can keep trusting him. So I don't know if today you are someone who is in the beginning of Psalm 41 and you're trusting in God's promises, or maybe you're in the middle of Psalm 41 and your reality doesn't seem to be matching up with what you know to be true about God. But my prayer for myself and for all of us is no matter where we find ourselves, that we can be people who at the end of the day can lift our hands up and say, God, it's you I trust. No matter what I'm going on is going on, you are the one whom I find my hope and praise be to you. That's my prayer for me and for you, and may you go and live in that peace today. Amen.